everybody. <laughs> uh, Rat out of 33 here. Been a while since I've done an Apple tutorial. It's been a busy summer. Um, been doing a lot of work. Busy uh, putting out some new uh, applications. They'll be out soon. But uh, right now I'm going to be doing a little bit of um, the most requested thing I've had on my channel. And that is actually just more simple apps. And so I'm going to be doing another app sim similar to... The very, very first Xcode tutorial I did on making a simple app, but this one's actually going to be different, and so it'll be good for everyone because it uses a totally different idea. So that one used um, like buttons and strings and stuff, and this uses them too, but differently. So I'm going to walk through Xcode and do all of that. So if you're not familiar with it, Xcode is basically the application you use to build iPhone and Mac apps. And... It is only available on Mac OS X, so, you know, people get kind of mad about that, but whatever. Now, I'm going to start Xcode. It's in my developer folder, and you can download it free from the Mac App Store, so go ahead and do that if you have not already. Um, sorry, I'm kind of stuffed up. I have allergies, and it's been a pretty crazy summer, but Photoshop. So, I'm going to do a new project. Now, usually a big screen opens up and it says welcome to Xcode, but that is, uh, anyways, that's what you'll see. So, when you choose a new project, this is basically what you get. Now, ours is going to be a single view application, but there's tons of different other ones, so I encourage you to do some research on these. Um, even just open them up and see what they look like. So, we're going to do single view application. Name it. Uh, I'm going to name this my first app, even though it's not. Ha ha ha. So witty. And we don't want to use storyboards. Maybe I'll do a storyboard tutorial later. I We will use automatic reference counting because it makes your life really easy with memory management. No unit tests. Uh, I just do com.jgreco. That's a reverse DNS, but that doesn't really matter. I don't do a class prefix. And we're going to do an iPhone app. And we do not want a local Git repository. And if you're curious about any of those things, uh, they're in a bunch of my other videos, so just browse through. Now, this is what you're left with when you first start Xcode. And so it's really overwhelming, I know, but I'm going to go through the things as I use them. And I think that's the best way to do it, is not try to handle it all at once. So if you look on the left here, you can see a target. Now, this is basically your project. You also have a list of files, and it says my first app, appdelegate.h appdelegate.m, viewcontroller, viewcontroller.m, and viewcontroller.xib. These are how you get your your program to run, basically. So appdelegate H and M, you don't use until you start to make more complicated apps. So what I would do for you is drag them into the supporting files folder. Oops, there goes my iPhone. Um, drag them into your supporting files folder so they don't confuse you and you don't work on the wrong one. Viewcontroller H and M are very important, and then viewcontroller XIB is actually how you build your app with Interface Builder. So if you've never used Interface Builder, this is what it looks like. And it's really cool because you can basically just drag things in. And so you don't need to do any crazy code or hacking. So that's cool. So the app we're going to build is basically going to take a few little buttons. And depending on which button you press, it's going to load a different website into a little web browser. So basically, you're building your own very simple web browser. Now, it doesn't really actually do anything. You won't be able to like put it in the store, but the idea is that you can get familiar with strings, making connections, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll continue on. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of buttons. Um, just ignore them until you get going, and I'll explain everything when I do it. Now, first thing we're going to do is actually in viewcontroller.xib. What we're going to do is, since we're going to be doing a web browser, maybe we'll make a label that says, my web browser. So if you see how I did that, uh, just if you need a reminder, I grabbed the label, I dragged it in, and then I double clicked it and changed the text. And then I dragged it and it gives you these nice little blue lines that tell you when it's uh, lined up appealingly. So now I'm going to do the same thing with three round buttons. And a good trick to learn, if you hold option and click and drag on the button, it gives you another one just like it. So you got to be careful with this trick because it also duplicates the actions, but uh, 
you know, anyway. So it's a good little trick. So I'm going to name this one. I'm just going to double click it and add a title, just like uh, the label. Google, um, what's another cool one? This is going to be so lame. I basically picked three search engines. So cool. So Google, Yahoo, and MSN. <laughs> And then we're going to scroll down. If you see this little thing, this is basically all the user interface elements that you can have in your app. And if it look yours when you open Xcode, might look like this. And that is uh, just file templates. This is code snippets. And this is media. And so you want it on this little square thing. If you don't have this toolbar at all, and your Xcode looks like this, or like this, or like this, or whatever, click these little buttons here that say View. So this one adds the left toolbar, which I always keep on. This one adds the debugger, which you don't need at all for this. Uh, this is just for debugging, and I cover that actually in one of my other videos. And this one adds that sidebar, which is the inspector, so you want that. And uh, if you look through these, these are all just different properties of what you're looking at. And so you don't really need to mess with any of those yet, but I'll show you when you do. Now. We've added our three buttons and our label. So let's add our actual web view. And this is how we're going to load the website. So scroll down through your objects library until you get to web view. And drag it in. And then line it up however you like it. So I'm going to have it fill the whole thing. And then uh, actually drag it. And drag it like this. And see it gives you those blue bars when it f tells you it's filling the whole thing. And I'm going to put it... Mm, just like that. That looks good. And here's, so this is going to be a very important part. This seems simple, but if we actually run our app, application, you'll see it has the views, but it doesn't actually do anything. And that's because we haven't implemented any code behind this. Now, iOS makes it really easy to connect buttons and views with actual code. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. And this is really an integral part of building an app. So let's just quit the iPhone simulator. And as you can see, it brought up the iPhone simulator and I hit run. And that's really fun too. You can just play around with that. But now we're actually going to make some code changes. So I hit that left bar or that right bar. And I'm going to click this little bow tie editor. And this is the really helpful editor that lets you connect your things. So this part is really important. And I'm actually going to delete this because it's bothering me. Okay, so this part's really important. You can't see it, but I'm holding the control button while I click on whatever I want to connect. So I hold control, click it, and drag it in. And it, see how it does this thing? It says insert outlet action or outlet connection. That is basically iOS's way of running a function, if you know uh, what that is, if you're familiar with programming. So connection. We actually want an action for all three of these. And so I'm going to name this uh, Go Google. I don't know. You can pick whatever names you want. It doesn't have to be this. And do the same thing for all three of them. Action, Go Yahoo, and Action, Go MSN. And now that's the beginnings of our code. Now, very lastly, we have to add an outlet for our web view. If you'll notice, I'm really being specific between outlet and action, and that's because they're totally different things. Outlets let you control data and data flow, and as well as like changing uh, pictures, changing views, changing attributes, whereas an action actually does something. So an action is usually user um, initiated. And so for this outlet, we're going to name this web view. And I'm just going to space it out. And now if we launch our app, ah, it still doesn't do anything. That's because we haven't written code. So we're going to do that now. So go to viewcontroller.m. And this is what you'll see. Now it looks really overwhelming. But I'm going to actually delete view did unload and auto rotate because I don't need it and it just clogs it up. First thing we're going to do is if you see here, these are IB actions. Now these are what basically uh, happens when you launch your app or when you click these buttons. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, 
iPhone and iOS uses Objective C, which is a superset of C, and it is uh, pretty close. I mean, it's really weird syntax, like these brackets aren't in C, like this thing, but if you understand C programming, oops, pardon me, you will understand Objective C. So, a really good resource for you is Stack Overflow, but I'll link that in the description and you can play with that later. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually open, like, make these buttons do something. Right now, they're just empty code. So what we're going to do is do something called a NSURL and an NSURL request. And this is how your application is going to use its web view. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll do the Google one first, is we're going to make an NS string. So type NS string, and if you hit tab, it completes it, and we'll name it URL string. You do at quotes, and uh, this lets you do a string. It's weird because you have the at sign, but anyway. And we're going to name this HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. And that's just your URL. So you should know that. Next, we're going to do an NS URL. And, oops, didn't autocomplete it. We'll name it URL equals bracket. And this is the weird part. You kind of do typecasting. So if you're familiar with C, uh, it's very similar to that. You basically have to tell your variable what kind of variable it is, even though it should know. So NS URL, and we're going to do URL with string, and we'll name it, and we'll use URL string. So what we're doing here is we're taking an NS URL, and we're giving it the data that is inside the URL string. Now we could actually take this and replace it with this whole line, but it would get really long and ugly, and so we're not going to do that. We're going to do it in different steps. And very lastly, we're going to do an NS URL request, and we'll name this request object, and that's because you can't use request, it's actually a uh, pre-implemented method. And we're going to do the same thing, NS URL request, request with URL, oh, look at that, we can use our URL, so that's cool. And the very last thing we need to do is actually load our request inside our web view. So to do that, we're going to do a bracket, web view, load request, and which request? Well, our request object. And there you go. So that should be all we need to do Google. Now, I'm going to do the same exact thing for Yahoo and MSN, because I'm running out of time. Okay, so I filled them all up. So now let's run our app and see how it works. Ah, so here we are. We look and nothing's been loaded. Let's try it out though. Click Google. Ah, look at that. Google fills up in our little web browser. And if you click Yahoo or MSN, the same thing happens. So, pretty cool. Um, you can add features. A really cool way to do this is actually to implement a modal view. So you can do some research on modal views and I'll show you what that looks like if you do a modal view. So now I have the three buttons, and it makes it a smoother appearance because if you click it, it launches it in its own little window. And so you can hit Done, or you can also open it in Safari. So that's just a cool little, um, you know, extra little addition you can go with your app. Do some research. Like I said, Stack Overflow is a really good resource for asking questions. Uh, you can hit me up on there. My username is the same as my channel, RadRider33. Follow me on Twitter. And if you have any questions, feel free to add mention me or message me or whatever. So that's pretty much it. A uh, quick little intro to iPhone Simulator and Xcode as well as making your first app. So thanks, guys.